for us, and of course, today is very special. We have a family, not a guest, of course. I'm not going to say he's a guest because uh, the church known him for quite a while now, even personally, PJ and Mama E, who's right now in Milan. Uh, so if you're not seeing them, just say hi on that camera. They're watching. Hi, PJ and Mama E. We miss you. And yes, I, we're getting the message, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, um, he's a close friend. Uh, they're a close friend of PJ and Mama E. They've been um, uh, uh, known each other for the past 20 years. 20 years, wow. Uh, we just celebrated our 30 years anniversary. Therefore, on the 10th year, they've met this wonderful uh, uh, man of God. And uh, we are indeed uh, uh, blessed. And um, um, uh, this is a privilege for us to be able to hear him for the first time here in Scarborough. He was able to, uh, he uh, uh, preaches in the morning today. And he's been, uh, the last time he preaches is 2016 during, um, yeah, in Brompton. And that time it was, it was our summit, right? Um, yeah. The governmental summit. Uh, then uh, we've seen him again 2019, just right before the pandemic in Calgary. So uh, there's a lot of things to catch up. And again, um, uh, Pastor Reggie um, and, of course, the lovely and beautiful wife, <laughs> Sister Cecil. They're uh, the senior pastor of Regions of Christ Ministry. Uh, international Philippines and uh, the reason that they were here it's not you know uh, we're blessed that they were going to share the message but we see that the Lord is working in their life as they are just uh, they just planted the church here in Toronto yeah. so again it's it's indeed a blessing come on let's let's give the Lord a, a wonderful praises into that one right and uh, they've been partnering with us we have the same kingdom culture the same mindset um, so if you have, you know, plans to go to the Philippines, aside from going to visit our CLC Philippines, visit them, right? Visit them. And um, uh, yeah, they are good friends of ours as well. And um, thank you for uh, uh, preaching today, uh, Pastor Reggie. And um, nice having you, uh, uh, Pastor Cecil. <laughs> uh, for, uh, it's, I thought it's, it's more on a break for me today, but... Um, just, it just gave me a lot of time worshiping, so I almost lost my, uh, my, my voice. Again, uh, let's welcome Pastor Reggie, and we'll bless him with, you know, he will kind of bless us with the word of God. And let's give him the warm Scarborough welcome. Pastor Albert, um, thank you everyone. We have, we, have, we have so many pastors in the house today. I'm so blessed. I'm um, well overjoyed to see Pastor Roy, a good friend of ours, Pastor Judy, and also Pastor Alex, Pastor uh, Michelle, all of you. Indeed, uh, we are so blessed. Um, and um, indeed, again, blessed Sunday everyone. This is the home of the champions, so blessed Sunday, everyone. Yeah. Champions. Usually champions shout as champions. No? Yeah. After victory, they have, uh, usually give a loud shout. So once again, uh, blessed Sunday, champions. Yeah. Indeed, great is the Lord and is worthy of all praise. Amen. And I am so grateful, first time to be here. Uh, in this beautiful sanctuary, uh, and also a wonderful time to be able to see once again our dear friends. And um, I was told that in this house uh, there's a lot of young people, my age, my age. That's why I changed my attire early on. Uh, Pastor uh, Pastor Paul, uh, who introduced me, our lead pastor in Brampton, also has. Uh, so I was observing how, not only how, we, how the people preach, but also how they dress up. So I need to dress up for occasion, okay? So it's been a while, but it's a great time to really be here. Really after what happened after the three years of pandemic, we're all here. And uh, yeah, it's good to be alive. It's good to be living, and despite of all the challenges we've faced the past couple of years, 
we are here not only to listen to the word, but be transformed. And we know that as champions, as people, the God we serve is true. I am so blessed. I'm also buoyed up with the kind of worship that we have in here. And um, again, things have changed so quickly, 2020, that understandably it's hard to figure out. It's very difficult on what happened. Uh, for us, uh, an opportunity for us to be uh, that, uh, open doors for us to be able to come here. Uh, we were able to process our visa, so we are, uh, at, the, at the moment it was open, we were able to come and visit you. But uh, this COVID-19 pandemic has propelled people towards um, radical changes in life. Uh, over the past couple of years, including career shifts, um, new relationships, even relocations. We often read about from the news about the, this phenomenon called Great Resignation. Started in North America, it trickles out also in our country, the Philippines. And um, this phenomenon is also evident in churches, where an unusual number of people uh, have stopped attending. Some church workers uh, also chose not to be active in ministry anymore. When the church doors open, they chose to uh, stay back. No? But of course, praise God, it doesn't happen here in Champion Life <laughs> because you're a home of champions. However, in some of the churches, it's ha it did happen. No? However, anyone who attempted to serve the Lord faithfully and live a life that honors Christ, that honors the Lord Jesus Christ, at this time, has but continually uh, the, the opposition and discouragement and it's so so become so severe that it, uh, it discourages you and it, uh, because it, prolong it, you're tempted to quit and other than the great resignation phenomenon there's an offshoot of that it's called quiet quitting and it's also here and when somebody observed that uh, although you are here you are maybe physically present but have quit uh, quit spiritually you're detached uh, emotionally you're not even willing to participate in anything and that is a great challenge, not only uh, for people outside of these walls, but also those people that are so-called Christians. And so the challenge is, we need to continue with our fight of faith. This is a journey. So quitting is often more the most straightforward response or course to take this at this time. It's easy to take it easy. It's easy to, uh, when you have that experience already of, Ah, uh, wow. Uh, it, we can continue with uh, so-called being a Christian by not doing anything. So uh, stay, just stay home. And so uh, there's an open uh, opportunity for you to go, just go online or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, uh, there's always this danger of uh, your spirituality. Mm -hmm. So there's this uh, quotation says there, Remember who you are and whom you serve. And then he challenges. Oswald Chambers challenged us and said, Provoke yourself by recollection. And your affection for God will increase tenfold. It means here, Oswald Chambers is trying to tell us you need to provoke yourself by trying to understand your purpose, your, your duty. And your imagination will be starved any longer, but will be quick and enthusiastic and your hope will be inexpressibly bright. Today I want to share from, uh, uh, from the book of Jeremiah, an Old Testament book. Uh, Jeremiah is known as the prophet of crisis. And so we are just coming out of crisis. And they say crisis is an opportunity. Crisis accelerates. And uh, I hope that everyone will be in tune with uh, each other to be able to see that the Lord has a message for us today. So... Here, Jeremiah, he preached to the nation at the time of decay, at the time of decomposition, at the time of they were facing doom after captivity of, uh, of the ruthless Babylonians. They were exiled in captivity for 70 years, and he was one who penned that famous uh, 
verse in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 says there, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never ceases. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. For a prophet in the midst of crisis, be able to pen this, such an encouragement that we, more than uh, thousands of years, is still very relevant for everyone. And I hope and pray that each of us will be able to see that God is the light as we declare, as we worship the Lord earlier, as we continue to uh, hum songs of praise and worship. I want you to focus on Him, that He indeed is so compassionate. He indeed is a God full of mercy, and His compassion never, ever fails. God calls every Christian for a specific purpose. You are called for a purpose. Say to the person next to you, you are called for a purpose. You are called for a purpose. And here's a count where to remind us in uh, the calling of Jeremiah, it says in, in uh, chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, it says there, the word of God came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as prophet to the nations. God wanted Jeremiah to know that his calling went back even before uh, he existed in his mother's womb. So in the case of us as Christians belonging to the same family, the Lord is also telling you right now that before you were formed in the womb, the Lord has a special purpose and calling in your life. It is not just to gather together on a Sunday, but the Lord has a special purpose in your life. And God wanted him to understand it. God told Jeremiah uh, this so that he could walk in God's preordained plan. That never forget, you're not here just to, be, just to be saved or just to be born again. To be born again, to be saved is just the beginning of a journey. Because God wants you to experience life in its full God wants you to experience the joy of having Him as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Earlier this morning, we had this wonderful baptism, water baptism. And I was reminded of, of what it is. Going back to the time where we surrender our lives to the Lord, God is telling us, you should be living a life right now, fully surrendered to God. And the vision, actually the vision uh, given to Jeremiah was fulfilled. It came to pass. Jeremiah served as a prophet under five kings of Judah during his lifetime. He had the privilege of preaching. He had the privilege of prophesying. He had the privilege of really proclaiming God's word to the leaders of the southern kingdom of Judah and others. So in this passage of scripture that I'm going to share and going to focus on, has, here Jeremiah has run into many challenges in life. Who among you here experience some challenges in life. Amen. Amen. All of us. And so we can relate to the fact that Jeremiah in the midst of a crisis also facing so much challenges and he being faithful in his calling tried to do it and however he ran into some challenges in life and people uh, including his family and friends were rejecting his messages. They were preparing the message really pouring out, having that passion for the Lord and then trying to share to your family, trying to share your to your friends, and they reject you. Rejection is, is real. Rejection is evident. Rejection is re uh, uh, being experienced by many of us. And here, Jeremiah experienced rejection. And he said people wanted to kill him because of his prophesying. No? And God seemed to be silent and not deal justice. He was going through situations in life, going through challenges. He was so exhausted in his ministry, and yet God seemed to be silent. He was not answering his prayers. And he was not dealing with injustice. And he, was, he came to a point, he was so frustrated, he bent it out to the Lord. He cried out to God, complained to God. And then he arrived in, chap, in chapter 12, where situations have caused Jeremiah to feel forsaken by God. He wanted to talk to God and ask him uh, why he had to face those complex challenges in life. I am a Christian. I am called. I'm walking according to your calling and yet I receive 
so many frustrations and disappointments. I'm on the brink of giving up. I'm on the brink of surrendering. I'm on the brink of quitting. And he wanted to talk with God and ask him why he had to face these challenges. And like he's really tired of running or tired of running against men. Have you felt asking yourself, God, that same question? You've been here, for, you've been a Christian for a long time and you've been being faithful in serving the ministry. You've been faithful in attending service, worshiping, attend, doing your ministry work with God. And then the challenges are ahead, especially at a time where uh, we are all, uh, we have uh, all of us experience the, the tremendous crisis of this COVID pandemic. It's really difficult to be isolated. It's really difficult to face life. It's really difficult, to, for example, for you or uh, some of you might have ex might uh, been infected by that virus, or some of you might experience uh, death of a loved one because of this pandemic. So at this time, Jeremiah was really spiritually, emotionally, mentally exhausted from the persecution he experienced from his people from his people, from his town people in Anatot. And he said, if God is God, why does uh, he allow bad things to happen to good people? And many in our church are asking that question. Good thing Pastor Roy last month went to our church and explained that to us. <laughs> Praise God. And, and why does he let evil people get away with good stuff? Jeremiah also questioned the prosperity of the wicked and asked why God seemed not to hand them the judgment they deserve. You may know some of you may know some people who may be experiencing that also, frustrated with life because uh, because they find themselves in situations where um, they do want, they do not want to be in. They see other people being promoted while you are being passed on. Uh, and you continue to have that routine job that you hate for 10 years now. You're still there. Single ladies have been bridesmaids, but never the brides. <laughs> Your friend just transferred to a bigger house, but you're still stuck there in that apartment house waiting for a time where you can experience to have your own. Some are frustrated because life is not going the way they want it. They are in the same situation as Jeremiah. But finally, in verse, in verse 5, God responded. God says, I heard enough. I heard enough of your whining. Let me respond. So in verse 5, which is our verse today, it says here from the Nasby version of the Bible, if you have run with footmen, and they have tired you out, then how can you compete with horses? If you fall down in a land of peace, how will you do in the thicket of the Jordan? Let me share with you a message I entitled, Called to Race Against Horses. We are all called to race against horses. Notice that here, God did not justify uh, what happened to, to Jeremiah. Instead, God tell him that he will be stretched even more. What's the problem here? Raise your hand. God is saying, you will be stretched even more. Those who are going through difficulties, you will be stretched even more. And God is saying this, yeah, I don't, I, I, I will not, uh, God is telling us that his plan for us is big, so you must be able to really be stretched to the point that you can be able to really fulfill the vision that the Lord has given you. So, just like every other Christian today, we, he must be prepared. Why? Because there are more significant challenge that we are going to face. Praise God, we have uh, successfully uh, been able to overcome uh, this COVID pandemic. And, and, but the Lord is saying this is not the end of it. We'll still be facing a lot of things that's going before us in the future. But the Lord wants you to be ready. And so this wonderful analogy that Jeremiah could expect to run against horses in the future, who have, 
Who of you have experienced running against horses? You can ride on a horse, but you, to run against a horse in the future, he must learn to trust God. We must learn to trust God. Remember, we are on a faith journey. Remember that we are here to learn to trust God, to draw strength. The worship we had is just wonderful. And I can sense the spirit of God in this place, filling every heart, preparing us for this one, for this message, because the Lord is telling you and encouraging you that whatever your situation is in life, is there. But first, you need to understand, you need also to prepare yourself to run, prepare yourself to race, prepare yourself to be able to have the, six, the stamina to endure. He must learn to trust God and draw strength from Him in the face of present challenges to prepare Him for more significant challenges in the future. If He's already having a hard time in His hometown in Anathoth, how can He face the, the challenges in Jerusalem? Because later on in the book, later on in His life, he will be, be spending a night in, a, in, a, in the stocks in Jeremiah 20. He will be confined in a cistern. He will be thrown into the pit. He will be imprisoned in the court, guard. And so he will, he will be experiencing much more difficulties going through and really trying to fulfill the message or the, the, the calling of God in his life. So the troubles we have in another, the troubles we're having now in our lives were nothing compared to the troubles that he will experience in Jerusalem, in Babylon, and also in Egypt. So here in the passage in verse 5, I have two observations we need to know and um, we need to make from this passage. Again, in verse 5 it says, If you have run with footmen and they have tired you out, how then can you compete with horses? Imagine that. If you're tired running, if you're tired running, walking, how can you compete when the ultimate challenge is to run against horses? If you fall down in the land of peace, how will you do in the ticket of Jordan? First thing, I just want to remind you, there is a race against men. Jeremiah here is running with the footmen, with the footmen. And God calls the problems Jeremiah is having right now, footmen problems. Say footmen problems. The Lord is saying the problems he's currently facing are light compared to the problems he will be facing in the future. Many of the problems we are facing today are just footmen problems. During the Old Testament or during the medieval times, um, nations uh, go to war. The, fir the first to be sent uh, is the infantry or the footmen soldiers. Soldiers before the they send the cavalry, okay, or the, the uh, soldiers on horses. The purpose of the footmen is to weaken the enemy lines. Satan sends footmen problems in your life to weaken your faith, to weaken your walk in the Lord. He gives you footmen problems. Let me give you some uh, examples of footmen problems. Emotional and mental stresses. They are footmen problems. Nobody understands you. Footmen problems. You have been lied to. You have been betrayed. You have been, you have been backstabbed. You have been maltreated. Footmen problems. You have been bullied and bashed in the social media. Footmen problems. You have been rejected by others. Not enough money to pay bills. Those were footmen problems. Domestic problems with spouse or children, footmen problems. Need helping finding a decent job or is always bypassed for promotion, footmen problems. So what generally what you are encountering right now are just footmen problems. Whatever problem you face, this might be just a footman situation and the Lord is saying instead of feeling for, sorry for yourself, you need to celebrate. You need to celebrate that because it means that you are headed toward the purpose of God in your life. Looking at your faces, 
Your face is blank. A pastor from the Philippines will visit you and will say that whatever you're experiencing right now, what problem, if you have a problem, celebrate. <laughs> but some of us, we need to celebrate. We need to understand to have a bigger picture of what it is. Some of us here are also going through challenging situations. There are those who are here in this special group because you uh, want to give up, but you decide to continue. There are so many temptations for you not to come here, but you are here. Amen. Praise God. You're supposed to go crazy, but you're still here. Praise <laughs> God. You're too, yeah, yeah. Just don't look at the person next to you. No? You're supposed to resign from work, but you decided to remain. You're supposed to walk away from your marriage but you're trying to restore it. You need to thank God that what you have are footman problems. Why should I thank God for all these problems? Here's why. Because there is another race. It's a race against horses. Race against horses. Footmen are just precursors, just, uh, forerunners to horses. Your present trials are preparing you for what's coming next. Are you not excited? That there's a greater problem coming. <laughs> that the present circumstances is a challenge. And there's a greater uh, a one awaits you. Wow. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor, for coming. But we need to understand this. We need to have a, a, a bigger view of a problem. Because the greater the trial, the greater the blessing. Who wants to be blessed here? Yeah. You know that God promised, that God has promised that I have come to give you life and life that is full, life that is abundant. And the Lord doesn't want you just to be stuck in where, where you are at, but the Lord wants you to progress. The Lord wants you to experience the fullness of life. Nobody has ever done anything significant for God or experienced the greatness of God without going through difficulties in life. You have to go through difficulties. You have to go through fire so that you will be able to experience the blessing. You have experienced the, 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 the blessing that the Lord ha has prepared for you. So the test, the test of the trial actually purifies the motive. The test of the trials purifies the motive. Trials are like fire. It purifies. You come out in every trial, in every, in every problem, you if you go to it and you come out of it, who, who will agree with me that when you go through it, you go out stronger and better as a person. Joseph, like Joseph, for example, he was betrayed. He was the dreamer. He has this vision of a big vision from God. He was so excited about it, but he was shared it to his brothers. What happened? He was betrayed by his brothers. He was, uh, he was thrown into the pit. He was sold to the slave traders. He was... Uh, and when he arrived in, in Egypt, he was wrongly accused by his masters. He was thrown into the jail. He was forgotten by his jailmates. But you know what? Because the Lord has a big plan for him, a big dream for him, a big vision for him. After 12 years, he became the second in Egypt, the second in command. Jesus himself had to go to the cross before he gets, before to be resurrected. You got to go through something, go through some adversity, adversity in life to get to, to where God wants you. Going back to verse 5, it says there, if racing against mere men makes you tired, how will you race against horses? How will you race against horses? In, in the natural, we cannot. Have you tried that? Don't you? <laughs> you? Even if you use the bike, it's difficult to outrun our horse because horses are strong. We measure the power of engines by horsepower, right? They are fast. An average horse walks 22 miles a day. A horse can run at full speed for several miles. It's a horse. They can perform in the heat and the cold. And they can sleep while they are standing. Oh, pastor, that's easy. <laughs> I can sleep while I'm standing. I can even sit. I can even sleep while sitting, listening to our sermon. <laughs> <laughs> but 
we, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, we cannot do what the horse is doing. If we try to run with a horse, it will beat us every time. But God says we, that we are supposed to contend with horses. Because his intention is this, for you to be able to understand, in life the Lord prepared you for something bigger, something greater, something wonderful. You are being prepared for kingdom work. It's not just about your work. It's not about, about your family. It's as small as a vision that is focused only on the family. Yours is the kingdom family. David. David, for example, killed the bear and the lion while he was a shepherd. He was a shepherd, boy shepherd, and shepherd boy. And, but the Lord has a, a plan for him. He, the Lord this, he has, has planned for him to be a king, from shepherd to a king. So he became a king. And when he was anointed by Samuel, he was so, he experienced the power of the Lord that he was able not only to, king, to kill a bear and lion, but he was able to kill a giant named Goliath. And from there, we'll look at his life. And it happened. Picture yourself as David. No matter what you are, you think yourself as lowly, but the Lord is seeing you as big. We have this devotional in Gideon in chapter, in Judges. And looking at himself, the Lord proclaimed to him, Gideon, you're a valiant warrior. You're a champion. You must belong to champion life because you're a champion. I said, oh, I'm afraid. I'm here in the cave. But the Lord said, no, your life is not supposed to be in a cave. Your life is supposed to be the deliverer of Israel against the Midianites. That's what the Lord is saying. What footman problems are you struggling with today? What struggles are you going through today? I know, I, I don't want to belittle it. I know it's big. I know it's hard. I know that, uh, like Jeremiah, you're, you're tempted to give up. But I'm trying to tell you, listen, if you persevere and continue to worship and serve God, He can use those things to prepare you for more significant challenges. God's plan for you. There are young people here in this room, and God plans to empower you to do what you never thought you could do. PJ and I, Pastor Roy, we've been in the ministry for a long time now, and a lot of young pastors are being uh, been ordained in this ministry. I'm so blessed, and I know your 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 loving uh, spiritual father, PJ, was so so uh, uh, well proud to share to me, well, you know, uh, we have wonderful pastors now. I have passing the, the baton and ensuring that there's continuity in the ministry. Uh, most of my primary leaders are 35 and below, about two years. I'm just two, about a couple of years older than them. But uh, <laughs> you see, they're young, no? They're young, and I'm so blessed. Because now I want to see, say that there's a greater vision God plans to empower you. God plans to bless you even more. To do whatever you, you never thought you could do. Beyond your imagination. It's not about the ability. It's not about education. It's not about uh, knowledge. It's all about faith in God. Yeah. It's all about faith in God. God will enable those who are available. Yeah. If you are available, willing to be used, God will use you and God will empower you. And it's a, one thing that I want to share with you. It's so exciting to serve in the kingdom of God. Because the one who created you knows you can get there because he made you to be more than what you seem. You know, God who created us has more confidence knowing that you, uh, he has created you. And he knows that you are, uh, uh, has the, you have the ability. You have the traits. You have what it takes to be able to uh, reach something that is far greater than you can ever imagine. Remember Zechariah 4, 6, it says, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Humans are not meant to depend on human strength. You are not created to depend on your own strength. When God created us, he created us to be power assisted. So that we could... Uh, because he knows, God knows that we're going to do it on ourselves. 
Remember what happened in Luke chapter 5? There's an account early on when upon the calling of the disciples, the fishermen then led by Peter had been uh, out all night fishing and but without a catch. How frustrating it is. You go and you get tired. You're so frustrated that after all night of hard work, still no produce, no catch. And they were all down. They had told, caught nothing. So Jesus now entered the picture after he preach and use the Peter's boat, he turned to him and said in verse 4, launch out into the deep and let down the nets for a catch. In verse 5, the following verse, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. As if Peter said, Lord, even though I'm tired, even though I'm faced with so many problems, and yet his word, I will do it. Wow, I will do it. Even though I am tired, I will obey. That's the one thing the Lord wants to hear from us. When you raise your hands and say, Lord, here I am, send me. Here I am, use me. Here I am, mold me. Here I am, I'm willing to take the journey of faith. The journey of faith is not only mountains, but also valleys. But even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord said, His with you, surely goodness and His mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And so, in, uh, you need to really make a decision here. We are, we are created to be stronger than our weariness, more robust than our diseases, more stronger than our past, there is a decision that we need to make. And so in verse 6, look what happened. When they obeyed, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Wow, imagine how God can turn our um, mourning into dancing. How God can turn our difficulty into victory. How God can turn your heartbreak into a breakthrough. That's how God is that's how good our God is Amen. that God is our way maker our miracle worker our promise keeper he's the light that will shine through the darkness Amen. I saw some people crying when they're singing it but the Lord is saying yes I want you to experience it that even though you are at the edge of your life I can still make a way I can still make a way for you don't give up don't quit the question is, are you willing to persevere in faith? The question is, it is, is it better to be rested but without any fish? Sometimes when you, when you contemplate on quitting, when you contemplate on, uh, on giving up on your ministry or giving up on your usual uh, faith journey in the Lord, you want uh, the common, common excuse is, I want to rest. But the thing is, is it better to rest but without any fish? Fish is supposed to be a blessing. Yeah, you're fully rested but you don't have anything. Or exhausted but a bountiful fish. Couch. What do you prefer? There's always a choice. God created us with the capacity to make decisions like that. If you don't make decisions like that, there is no difference between you and an animal. You see, as strong as a lion is, even if it's hungry, when it must run and reach the, 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 the limits of its train, he will stop. He will not pursue his prey. And he will just stop and go hungry. But we are not animals. We are human beings created by God unto his image. And though Lord, the Lord is saying, I created you to take dominion. Amen. 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 So there's no way. He created us to be something more. I want to encourage you. There is a reason why we all survived the pandemic. Why we are now gathered here together. Because there is a reason that the Lord has a plan for us. A greater plan that you can ever imagine. So how can we apply this? The, prop, the challenge is don't, just don't, go, don't get weary with the footman problem you're facing right now. Because you are created to be more. You are created to be more than what you think. And running like mere men, 
may take you to the brink of break breakthroughs if you run with your own strength. Yes, you may get the strides you like. You may be able to uh, experience close to success. You will always be successful. You will almost obtain it, but you won't. You will not be able to sustain using your own strength. But when you run like a horse, that will take you to your prize. God is saying, I want you not just to run the race. I want you to get the prize. I want you to finish well. I want you to be able to experience the fullness that life has to offer you. So God created you to be more than that. So do not be discouraged. Do not, uh, wherever you are going through right now, just hang on. Say to the person like you, just hang on. Because God plans to empower you. Remember, God plans to fill you up with His love, fill you up with His goodness. You're about to run with horses. You're about to run with horses. Are you ready to run with horses? You're to race against horses. That is what God wants you to be. And you must always be willing. I remember a song leader saying, oh yes, lift out your hands. You believe he's the way maker, the miracle worker. You are expecting God to do that miracle for you, right? When you're declaring, Lord, you are this word, this, this truth, Lord. You are the one who will give, make a way where there seems to be no way. You're the one who will provide a miracle for me. I am at my ends with, but the Lord, you have given me extra. The only way that we, we can proclaim it is through a testimony of God's goodness. And the testimony is brought out by something you're coming out of. Yeah, that's the problem you do. Before I came here, I have my group here, so I want to share a testimony. I didn't share it this morning, but I want to share to encourage everyone. You know, uh, during the pandemic, it's what, 2021? 2020, back in 2020, it's, we're all isolated. Uh, I don't know here, but in the Philippines, we have uh, to stretch the lockdown, the isolation. We cannot get out of the house, so we cannot go to the church. It's been, uh, yeah, I, for a pastor, we've been going places, I've confined in a room, praying, what, what shall I do, Lord? And then suddenly, well, we have this connection from, from, from Toronto, Canada, uh, a friend of mine, a long lost friend, or acquaintance actually, contacted me, and that was the start of this, our, our, our ministry here. And after a while, we started the cell group, and this year, we desire, decided that we will take it to the next level. We're, we're, we're okay with the online thing. With all, we're okay with online ministry. And we have so many uh, of our friends really uh, being committed to the time set uh, for our Bible study. But we said we have to have, we have to journey them. And we decided, yeah, let's pray. That they first, they participated. They participated in our uh, discussions. They are now, before you can see, uh, you're familiar with Zoom meetings, right? You can turn it off. You can block it. You can just, I don't know what you're doing. You can sleep while they're praying, you know, everything. But they started to participate. They started to share their stories. And they started to really open up. And we, we are so excited because we know that we are growing, even though we haven't seen each other personally. So that's how, what happened. And so we have decided, yeah, let's uh, if an opportunity will op be open, let's come here and allow them to have uh, ex to experience encounter weekend. And after that, uh, a first in-person gathering. And uh, all, all, all was planned. But you know, a month before that, before I come in, I, we, we arrived here. Uh, my mother passed on and um, it was a struggle. After Pastor Roy left, my mother, uh, I heard news of the, my, my mother's sudden passing. And then there's so many work to do in the ministry, and I have to finish it. We have so many things. Got tired. There was a time a week before her leaving, uh, I got, I got my uh, foot sprained, and I sprained my ankle, and also um, 
also uh, the day of, uh, of our departure, I had this palpitation and uh, about four hours before the flight, it was really, my heart rate is about 189 something. So Cecil, my wife said, uh, can you do it? Can you, can, can we, um, do you want me to bring you to the hospital or something? And the Lord is, I said, well, just uh, give me some time to rest. And three of my pastors were there also in the office and they prayed for me. And uh, yeah, I was able to overcome all those challenges. I was here uh, first week, still limping now, I see uh, with my rubber shoes on. <laughs> and I can continue to walk. And you see, there's a breakthrough. I was so, I'm so encouraged by what happened. The people in our encounter during last week, they were so, uh, uh, I believe that something happened to them. And all of the plans that we have set out, so many wonderful testimonies, wonderful stories coming out, and all that, all that is because God wants to stretch you so that you will be able to personally experience how he can move in your life and be able to exp and assure you that whatever he will say, that he will promise it will come to pass. Amen. And so they are here with us. And so we are praising God for everything. Tomorrow we're going to have our water baptism. And really, hopefully, pray for us because God is, uh, yeah, we want to be able to really have a journey. But one thing is for sure. Whatever your experience is right now, going through situations, about to give up. If you are sick, if you have financial problems right now, the Lord is here to empower you. Remember, we are created to be power assisted. You cannot do it on your own. God is here to encourage you, not only to encourage you, but to fill you up so that you will be able to experience a supernatural power because supernatural power comes only from a supernatural source. And there's only one supernatural source, and that is God, our source and our sustainer. And so today as we close, allow me to pray for you, if though... If um, you are here going through some situations in life, and then you, it came across your mind to, to, to rest, to stop, to quit, you got so frustrated in life that you're thinking there's no uh, hope in it, but I tell you, there's, all, there's hope when you only trust God. Just believe. That the Spirit is here, given to us by the Lord, not only to comfort us, but to be our sustainer. That the Lord wants you to continue with the race, Amen. to continue to run against horses, so that He will be able to experience not only to finish what you've started in the Lord, but to be able to win the prize. Amen. 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 And so, I would like to ask the, the worship team again to. Just sing the song, He is the Waymaker. Do you believe that the Lord is our Waymaker? Yes. And that song was sung for a reason. The Lord wants to minister to you, those who are tired and those who are weary. Allow the Lord to minister to you today. If you're that person right now, if you're willing to let the Holy Spirit touch you today, let the song minister to you and let the Holy Spirit minister to you as well. For God is saying to you today, I will strengthen you. Remember, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You have a special purpose, a special calling. Receive that anointing from God. So at the count of three, if you're that person, I didn't do that earlier, but I want, I'm being moved by the Lord through that song to just minister to you. If you're that person who's tired or having situations in life, let the Lord touch you today so that you will be able to experience His empowering touch. At the count of three, those who are in need of a refill, God is here. One, two, three as the song is being sang. Let us all rise. Please. Let's all rise. If those who are willing to be ministered, 
just come in front. We're going to pray for you. Moving in If you're sick, if you're sick, if you're if you have a loved one going through situations, if you've been tired of li- of, of of that routine life that you're in, there is Jesus. Yes, O Lord, I worship. Young people, the Lord has wonderful plans for your life. Be filled. you, that will fill you, that will strengthen you and encourage you, just believe that what you're experiencing are temporary. They are necessary, but temporary. They are necessary to to strengthen you and to encourage you even more so that you can continue running in this race called life. So, just Open your heart and receive the power of God.
always happen in our lives, O oh Lord our God. It's still at work in our lives, Father God. Lord, thank you, O oh Lord our God, for your goodness and your faithfulness, O oh Lord our God. Thank you, O oh Lord our God, for the infilling, O oh Lord, of your spirit, O oh Lord our God, in our lives, O oh Lord. May you continue to restore us, O oh Lord, envelope us with your love, O oh Lord our God. And, and, and Lord, continue to allow us, O oh Lord our God, to have that thirst and hunger for you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, O oh Lord our God. We bless you, O oh Lord our God. We bless you and we give you thanks and all the praises in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. And um, again, thank you, Pastor Reggie. We, uh, we uh, are indeed uh, blessed to have you uh, here and all of us here as well. And uh, thank you for sharing your heart and sharing the love, your love for the Lord and sharing His word for us. And um, for those the people who still wanted to be prayed for or ha didn't go uh, in front, um, feel free to see us after this, the celebration. We will definitely pray for you. We will lay hands uh, for you. Uh, you can see me or the rest of the pastor here. And right now, let's just extend our hands to heaven as we pray for the benediction. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we rejoice, O Lord, in your greatness and power. Your gentleness, O oh Lord our God, and your love, your mercy and justice. Enable us, O oh Lord our God, by your spirit to honor you in our lives daily. May the strength of God sustain us and may the power of God preserve us. And may the hands of God protect us. And may the way of God direct us. And may the love of God go with us daily. And may the peace of God enfold us. The love of God uphold us. The wisdom of God control us. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. You are blessed coming in. And go share the blessing and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all the people of God will say, Amen and Amen and Amen. God bless everyone and have a wonderful Sunday. And for those who are watching us online, see you Sunday next Sunday. God bless you.